Hello everyone and welcome you all in this next class. Until now we have understood how to calculate the different parameters of concrete stress block diagram and there we calculated the total compressive force as well as the depth of that compressive force and later we also calculated the total tensile force in the steel bar. So from equilibrium of section compressive force is equal to the tensile force and we got this equation. Okay. So in this equation if you see the only variable is xu which is the depth of neutral axis and xu can be written as so from this formula we can get the actual depth of neutral axis in the cross section all right and you can very easily calculate it if you are given the grade of a steel fy grade of concrete fck width of the cross section b and the area of steel reinforcement ast okay now in conclusion these forces are also shown here and we can see the compressive force acting here okay with the depth 0.42 xu and this is the magnitude and the magnitude of both the forces are same and they cancel out each other but if you look at the direction of these forces you will observe that they are forming a couple couple means kya hota hai ek moment jo generate kar deti hai to ye kis tarike se ye jo force hai ye anti clockwise rotate karna cha rahi hogi c whereas the tensile force will also tend to rotate the section into anti clockwise direction so this is a generation of couple or moment so the distance between two parallel forces generating a couple is called lever arm and this distance is equal to the effective depth minus 0.42 times the depth of neutral axis so this value is the lever arm between both these forces so the same thing is written here that c and t together forms a couple with lever arm developing some moment of resistance for this section so this generation of couple is not just useless because if you apply some load on any member let us say if it is a beam so due to flexor the bending moment is generated throughout the span of the beam and that's why we draw the bending moment diagram that clearly means that each section inside the beam is subjected to some bending moment due to the load now that bending moment is resisted by this couple which acts in the opposite direction and that's why it is called moment of resistance means the capacity to resist the applied moment due to the external loadings so this moment of resistance calculation is very very important for the analysis problem where you have to arrive a single solution of moment of resistance so the next question is how you are going to calculate the moment of resistance so it is very very simple if you have calculated the both the parameters of the concrete stress block and this is very easy if you look at these equations we can calculate the moment of resistance by two ways if we want to calculate the moment of resistance in compression zone because sometime we are only able to calculate this compressive force so in such cases we have to multiply the compressive force with the lever arm all right so this is c multiplied by lever r it is very easy to understand you can look at again this diagram and we have multiplied the force with the lever arm only and in the similar case we also calculate moment of resistance in tension zone and in tension zone the tensile force is 0.87 fy into area of steel reinforcement multiplied by the lever arm and lever arm is effective depth minus 0.42 xu so we know the magnitude of c and magnitude of t both is same so even if you calculate the moment of resistance in compression zone or you calculate the moment of resistance in tension zone from both the methods you are going to arrive at the same solution of moment of resistance so you can always choose whichever formula is more suitable convenient or easier for you but before calculating you have to calculate the value of xu and this is the actual depth of neutral axis all right so this value of depth of neutral axis is very very important because it plays a lot of game in the design of singly reinforced beam or the doubly reinforced beam because a lot of things are going to depend on this depth of neutral axis this depth of neutral axis also has a maximum value so the next question is what can be the maximum depth of neutral axis because by definition if we see neutral axis is an axis where deflection 
or the strain is zero there is no deformation why because the stress value is zero there at the neutral axis bending stresses neutralize each other the tensile bending stress and the compressive bending stress neutralize each other at the neutral axis so there is no stress and no strain and no deflection so this depth of neutral axis is always taken from the top fiber as we know so there is some limiting value of depth for neutral axis so we represent that value by two notations that is xu limiting or xu maximum both of these notations are same okay so how to calculate this maximum depth of neutral axis as per the is code bc at limiting value of depth of neutral axis means kya hota hai jab depth of neutral axis apni limiting value ko achieve kar jaye because at that value a very particular thing happens and that is what it is written here that concrete reaches its maximum strain or the ultimate strain equal to 0.0035 and steel also reaches its maximum strain 0.002 plus 0.87 fy divided by es simultaneously at the same time both of the material reaches its maximum strain values so if i write somewhere xu lim or somewhere as xu max don't get confused both are same so this is xu lim and the remaining depth is effective depth minus xu lim okay so now it is very easy to calculate the limiting depth of neutral axis from the similar triangle rules so this triangle if you see is similar to this triangle and we can apply from the similar triangle rules 0.0035 divided by xu lim is equal to 0.002 plus 0.87 f by by es divided by d minus xu lim okay so now we just have to do a little transformation in this equation and we brought all the variables at lhs and we put the value of elastic modulus of a steel 2 into 10 to the power 5 mega pascal here and uh, then simplifying this equation d by xu lim we get this value and ultimately we arrive to the value of xu limiting which is equal to 700 divided by 1100 plus 0.87 fy multiplied by the effective depth hence it can be concluded for a given value of effective depth d xu limit depends on only on the grade of a steel fy once again i repeat it for a given value of effective depth d for any cross section of a beam xu limit for that beam depends only on what the grade of a steel fy it never depends on grade of concrete fck type of loading whatever loading it may be or the magnitude of loading or the dimension of cross section nothing to worry about that so only it depends on the grade of a steel so from this formula we have calculated different value of xu max divided by d for different grade of a steel like fe250 fe415 fe500 and you can see values 0.53 0.48 and 0.46 so the ratio of limiting depth of neutral axis and the effective depth only depends on the grade of a steel and you can remember this value also and if you look at the page number 70 of is 456 code under this note it says the limiting value of the depth of neutral axis for different grade of steel based on assumptions are as follow this is the grade of steel fy and 250 415 and 500 is listed and corresponding to them the values of xu limiting divided by the effective depth d is written as 0.53 0.48 and 0.46 so all these three values are going to be very very important in most of the calculation that we are going to see in the upcoming videos now the question may come why do we say this depth of neutral axis as the limiting or the maximum depth of neutral axis and it is very nicely written here is that if the actual value of depth of neutral axis that is xu is equal to 
or less than the limiting or the maximum value of depth of neutral axis then our section is called as balanced section or under reinforced section see i will be discussing all these types of section in the next video so such a balanced or under reinforced sections are most desirable for design because in such section we achieve the ductility in rcc and that is what we want because we get a warning before the actual failure occurs in ductile rcc elements whereas if in case the actual depth of neutral axis xu exceeds the value of xu max or the limiting value of depth of neutral axis then our section is over reinforced section which is strictly prohibited in the code is 456 because over reinforced section is a brittle section and such section do not give us warning it can collapse any time if the load exceeds without giving us warning so design of such a section is prohibited as per the indian standard codes so what are these three different types of cross section balance section under reinforced section and over reinforced section so we will discuss all these things elaborately in the next video so you can wait for that so till that stay tuned and stay safe thank you